Good morning and happy Easter. This morning we gather together in the spirit of the risen Christ. We're not able to gather physically because of COVID-19, an example of the brokenness of our world. But as our song of faith proclaims, yet evil does not, cannot, undermine or overcome the love of God. But just as we gather each week for worship in community with sisters and brothers around the world, so today we worship as one body, though separated by space. Our service will include the celebration of the Sacrament of Holy Communion. Gathered around the Lord's table, although separated into our individual homes, we will eat and drink together, remembering the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus and in response to Christ's call. May this worship experience nurture, nourish, and strengthen you for your journey of faith in these difficult times. I invite you to follow along in the order of service that you may have downloaded. The Lord has risen. He has risen indeed. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive. God's victory over death has begun. By the Spirit, Jesus meets us here in the breaking of bread and the raising of the cup. God forms us into a community empowered to love the world in Jesus' name. Hallelujah! Let us worship God. As we sing, Christ the Lord is risen today.
We are all touched by the brokenness of the world, the rise of selfish individualism that erodes human solidarity, the concentration of wealth and power without regard for the needs of all, the toxins of religious and ethnic bigotry, the degradation of the blessedness of human bodies and human passions through sexual exploitation, the delusion of unchecked progress and limitless growth that threatens our home, the earth, the covert despair that lulls many into numb complicity with empires and systems of domination. We sing lament and repent. In the silence of our own hearts, we offer to God our personal prayers. And we sing the Kyrie. Gospel. 
Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she went down to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated with Jesus, where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Mary replied, They have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, Mary turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, Mary said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will go get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, the mother tongue of Jesus and his disciples, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. They stopped walking for a moment, their hearts heavy with grief, and it showed on their faces. They told Jesus about their hopes for Jesus of Nazareth and about the terrible events of his arrest, trial, torture, and execution as an enemy of Rome. This stranger spoke to them about how all of this had been predicted in Scripture. Before they knew it, they had arrived at their destination. The sun was setting. The stranger bade them farewell and seemed determined to travel on. They insisted that it wasn't safe to travel at night, and asked him to accept their hospitality. As they sat down to a simple meal, they invited their guests to ask the blessing over the food. As he took up the bread, and blessed and broke it and gave it to them, they recognized that it was Jesus, but then he was gone. They hurried back to Jerusalem, and found the other disciples, breathlessly sharing with them their experience on the road and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. Let us pray. Loving God, in the reading of the Bible may your word be heard. In the meditations of our hearts may your word be known. And in the faithfulness of our lives may your word be shown. Amen. From three of the four Gospels, we have stories of the experience of the members of Jesus' community on that first Easter day. We have stories of the experience of the women and men who were closest to Jesus. We're familiar with the stories of the twelve disciples or apostles, fishermen, the tax collector, just regular guys who left everything to follow Jesus. They had accompanied him for the last three years, walking from place to place in Galilee, in Samaria, and then in Jerusalem. They very likely knew a range of emotions that weekend. They were ashamed when the chips were down that all of them had run away to save themselves when Jesus was arrested. Simon, the one Jesus called Petros, the rock, actually denied three times that he had ever known Jesus. And they were still terrified. They were well known as Jesus' followers. They had been seen in his company for these past three years. Now they fully expected that the wrath of the Roman Empire would come down on them as it had on their master. We don't know as much about the women of Jesus' community, but the Gospel writers tell us that the women were present at the base of the cross. They did not run away. It was the women 
who helped to take Jesus' lifeless body from the cross, and with Joseph of Arimathea to lay him in the tomb. Since it was the Sabbath day, which begins at sunset on Friday, they weren't able to do the ritual preparation of the body. They noted where Jesus' body was placed and prepared to return even before daybreak on the first day of the week, on Sunday. Who were they? Mary, the mother of Jesus. We can only imagine her heartbroken grief at having watched her son executed by Roman soldiers. Mary Magdalene, a woman who had been abused, rejected, and ostracized by many of the people in her life. Jesus saw her inner strength and beauty and accepted and forgave and loved her, making her part of the loving community. Joanna, another of the women of Jesus' community, she was healed by Jesus and then followed him in the way. Her name means God has been gracious. She is said to have been one of the women who provided from their own family resources for the needs of Jesus and his community. These women, with others, came to the tomb on Easter morning. They were expecting to anoint Jesus' body in the rituals of burial and grieving, according to the customs of their day. These women were surprised, astonished, overjoyed, and terrified by their encounter with angels. These women became the first witnesses to the resurrection. It's important for us to note that Jesus came to Mary Magdalene outside the garden tomb, and she did not recognize that it was Jesus. Jesus came to her incognito. She thought he was the gardener, and it was when he called her by name that she recognized him. The message given to Mary and the other women was that they should go and tell the other members of the community that Jesus had risen from the tomb and that he would meet them back in Galilee. Jesus would meet them in the places where they lived. Two other disciples traveled the short walk from Jerusalem to the village of Emmaus, encountering Jesus on the road. But they did not recognize that it was Jesus. Jesus came to them incognito. They thought he was a traveler, as they were. It was in the offering of hospitality and the breaking of bread that they recognized him. Jesus comes to us incognito. We meet him along life's journey, in the ordinary places where we do our living. Jesus comes to us embodied in family, friends, neighbors, and strangers whom we encounter along the way. In the 25th chapter of Matthew, Jesus says that whenever we act on behalf of one of the least of these, his brothers and sisters, we are serving him. For us too this morning, as we partake of Holy Communion, Jesus comes to us, is known to us in the breaking of bread. As we gather around the Lord's table, you in your homes and your minister here in our sanctuary, Jesus comes to us, is known to us in the breaking of bread. And not only when we gather around the Lord's table, here at church, you in your homes. But every time we break bread and drink together, Jesus said, remember me. So today we remember his birth, his life, his ministry of caring and compassion, and his suffering and death. But on this Easter day, most importantly, we remember that God acted to, to defeat death in bringing Jesus to life again, and that the risen Christ walks with us daily. Christ comes to us incognito. Even though we live our lives primarily 
on Easter Saturday, even though we live in the not yet of the full reign of God, we know that the power of death and the grave, the power of the brokenness of the world, is ultimately broken. God is with us, at work in us and others by the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. At this point in our worship service, we usually offer our tithes and offerings, our gifts, acknowledging with gratitude the many gifts we've received by God's grace. Even though we're not together this morning, you are invited to remember the needs of your church in this challenging time. You can send your offering to the church treasurer, or in the case of Picton United Church, you can give your gift online through the church website. And so we say, we give thee but thy own. To the sick, he gave healing. To the hurting, 
he was a friend. Still people turned away from you. They betrayed Jesus and nailed him to the cross. But he was lifted from the grave and restored to life that he might be with us and we with him, alive forevermore. Therefore, with all the saints, and in every time and place, we join the angels in their praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, vulnerable God, your strength is made perfect in weakness. Blessed is the one who comes to proclaim justice and peace on earth. Hosanna in the highest. We gather at this table to remember that on the night before he died, Jesus ate with his friends. He took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Do this in remembrance of me. That same night, Jesus also took a cup of wine, and after giving thanks, he passed it to his friends saying, Drink this cup, poured out for you. It, it is the promise of God. Whenever you drink it, remember me. We remember Jesus' death and celebrate his resurrection. We await with hope his coming again to bring peace and justice to earth. And we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Send the kind Creator, your Holy Spirit, upon us and what we do here, that we in these gifts, touched by your Spirit, may be signs of life and love to one another and to the world that you love. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, holy, my holy mystery, who is holy love, now and forever. Amen. We pray the words that Jesus taught us as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Though we cannot be together this morning, we are united in the spirit of the risen Christ, who meets us here at this table. You are invited in your home to partake of the bread and then of the cup, as I invite you to do so. Taking the bread, Jesus said, As often as you do this, remember me. Bread for the journey. And after supper, Jesus took a cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, This cup is a new covenant, my life poured out for the life of the world. Friends, partake of this as the wine of arrival. I invite you to join now in the prayer following communion. Life-giving God, we give you thanks for the gift of Jesus, his presence in the simplicity of this holy meal. Unite us with all 
who are fed by the life of Christ, that we may faithfully share the good news of your love in an uncertain world through the gift of your Spirit. Amen. Our parting hymn, sent forth by God's blessing, is number 481 in Voices United. Go in peace. Amen.